This week on the ritual, uh, yeah, misery pro. Uh, see that? Oh man, uh, stream deck. Wow, I, stream just got me all flustered. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing's on fire yet. <clears throat> this week Move on, along. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this week on the ritual misery program, we talk about bottle openers and not. Not just your normal bottle openers. I'm talking top shelf bottle openers. I've definitely got plenty of those. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you do. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 272 for Thursday, the 11th of February, 2021. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and the most important part of the show is, of course, you, the listener, the viewer, the emailer, anybody but the troll, because, well, I get enough spam as it is. I don't need to delete more things. Kent, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Um, I'm glad to be on the podcast. I'm, I'm pretty podcast. sure that's what you said in the, the intro. Like four times. Um, I, I, I want to know what, what that would be like. Like, what would a podcast be? Um, uh, I would say that we already have podcasts. Like, it'd be a fully produced <laughs> podcast, right? Like, you know, you got sound effects and whip zings and bang whizzes and... You know, it's got like guests All the and like, stuff. yeah, like call yes. in, call in areas and shit like that. Like it'd be like, you know, it'd be like morning zoo plus, uh, plus CNN nightly news or whatever the hell they call that shit now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah so a, 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 a truly produced podcast would be a podcast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that we, makes complete sense to me. We can only aspire to reach that level. So sp- speaking of, of produced podcasts or at least previously produced podcasts well uh, it's it's hard to produce them after the fact well you you remember uh you remember tell it anyway yeah the the wonderful show that was uh hosted by jenny josephson uh the, made its comeback for the, new year's eve the long-running yet still short-lived wonderful podcast yeah, so I was I was thinking about tell it anyway recently, and uh, I, I'm just curious if you were if you were to let's just hypothetically you were going to be on tell it anyway, what type of story do you think you would tell? Because if you remember the show is like it's themed, right? right? So it would be like for example, one of the early episodes was about camp, right? So everybody, all all the guests that came on to tell their story. Because it's typically three guests, three stories, right? Right, but all the all the stories follow that theme. So mm-hmm. that the episode about camp, each person brought a story about camp. So what what would be a a theme that you think you've got a really worthy story for? I okay. First of all, I don't think I have a really worthy story for any theme. Like <laughs> every story that I know that I could I could just tell at the top of my head my head is because it came to me at the top of my head. So, like, that's just, that's not how my brain works. I don't have, like, a, I, like, I don't remember jokes until it's time to tell a joke, and then I might remember one, and if I do, that's the only one I remember. Like, that's just how my brain works. I don't have, um, I, I have, I have good, I have a good drunk night out story for a certain company. Okay. It is not one but- for the children's or for, uh, certain other family members. Yeah. What about you? Okay. So, like, what, what do you so, so you so you would tell it anyway, or you wouldn't tell it anyway? I well, on that podcast, I would tell it anyway. I just wouldn't tell certain people that I was on the podcast. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, no. So I, I was thinking about this too. Like, I've basically got two categories of of like good stories. By good, I mean like I can tell them well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, one of them falls in the category that you were just talking about, where not so sure I want many people to know these stories. So I've only told them very selectively. Right. Uh, and then the other ones are war stories, basically. Like, right. Uh, like yeah. stories about deployments and yeah. things that happened in uh, 
remote locations. God for God forsaken places. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I I think my problem with it would be that I'm not a great storyteller. Like I can relay an experience, but I don't necessarily think I could wrap it into a story and tell a cohesive, like single line, you know, linear story out of my experience. That's not typically mm -hmm. how my like I have lots of memories that I could formulate and, and share, but like a, having a run through line story, like that's just not how my brain works. It's not how my memories work. So that would be my shortfall. And that's why I'm not a writer, Master Worm. Hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's, and, and that's the crazy thing because it's almost like, um, like, like trying to figure out a, a topic for this podcast. It's like, man, just tell me what the topic is. And then I, I will come up with something for right. it. You know, I will write to that topic, but Trying to be the the I guess the innovator the uh, you know the person that sparks that idea like we are going to talk about this thing like that's the hard part right. for me right in fact if, if I were on that podcast what would ha end up happening is they would be like yeah we're gonna do stories about Easter and I'd be like okay cool <laughs> and then um, I would sit there and wait until my turn and. It, as my turn occurred is when I would choose what experience I wanted to try to turn into a story. Wow. You know, like the time that I told my future girlfriend that my current girlfriend was the hottest thing ever. And they were sisters. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That, that may not have, that may not have had, uh, crabs crawling on trees in, in the story, but, yeah, whatever. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I kind of, yeah, I knew, I knew the punchline, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, wow. that was, uh, that was back when we were, I mean, we had, we were really kind of best friends at the, at, in high school when that, when that occurred. So it's not like you didn't know about it. So, <laughs> right. yeah. Oh, um, man. So I, this is one of the things that gets me is how different people's brains work different ways. And okay. I am one of those people where I get highly, highly agitated at small, seemingly small things. Like other people don't don't care about the shit that just off the rails pisses me off. And as I've gotten older, I'm like practically fucking dead now. Um, I've learned to kind of internalize that and control it and address it in other ways if necessary. Or to try to spin it into something funny, which just as often fa falls flat on his face as it does make anybody laugh. But one thing that always gets me is how different people react in emergencies. How are you in oh. an emergency? Are you like, I, I'm not, I, I don't want to feed you a bunch of answer, answers because I'm not Harry Lippman. So how are you during, <laughs> how, how, what's your, what's your thought process during an emergency? Um, uh... Typically calm, uh, calm, but heightened, I guess. Um, super observant. Um, I, I, I think I've got an uncanny ability to like, to not freak out. Uh, like, like in the sense that like when someone's reacting to something bad, like their first reaction tends to be emotional. So whether that's fear or, or, uh, sadness or anger or whatever right, the thing right. is, my first like the first thing that my brain does is like an assessment, hmm. um, you know, and then like, I, it's almost like I have to process it first and then I will experience an emotion. Um, gotcha. Okay. So, so tip, like, let's say the building was on fire. I'd probably be the guy that's like going room to room and telling people to get out and pointing them to the exit. Right. Uh, versus being the one that, that, you know, runs for the exit hmm. or, or freaks out or whatever. Um, I tend to be okay, at least in the situations that I've been in in the past. Okay. I am the, 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 the more strenuous, the, in, the more strenuous and immediate the emergency or the action or whatever, the better I am at basically dehumanizing the situation. Mm, and okay. I say that because it's not just a lack of emotion. It's also a lack of concern for certain people. 
if there's a car wreck mm. and there's a person in the car that's very injured, there's a person thrown from the car that's got a, you know clearly a broken leg, and then there's uh, a, a woman just freaking out because her car just got hit. Mm-hmm. It's not even like an assessment. Like I, I got to triage all these people or whatever. Oh, sure. You yeah. know, like I don't even give a shit about the emotional lady. Like if if she comes at me because she needs help or whatever else, and she starts, you know, doing the freak out thing where she's hitting on me, I'm tackling her to the ground, putting her in handcuffs, and walking away. Like I don't give two shits about <laughs> you. Um, right. But I take everything very objective. Like I immediately go into pure objective mode, and, mm-hmm. um. I I don't react the way that people think I should because I don't react with with like a sense of urgency or care. I'm not crying. I'm not doing any of that. It's simply what is the most effective thing that I can do in this particular situation? And I focus on that. The problem is, and that sounds really good and grand. It sounds like I'd be a great EMT or whatever else, you know, like because I can put all that shit and not even worry about it for two days. The part that gets me in trouble is that that sometimes triggers on smaller things. So Uh, the kids are running late for school. And that triggers. And I'm literally picking up kids and carrying them to the car to get them to school on time. Because if they're late today, they miss out on the assembly that they've been looking forward to. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, so it's almost like an overreaction in certain circumstances that's helpful in others. (laughs) <laughs> yeah interesting um yeah i i think well you and i react differently but i think we both share that uh when we're presented with something like that we're underwhelmed uh like like yes. you talk about it emotionally right yes so <clears throat> yeah like if somebody comes like burst in here right now and says so and so just cracked their head open or or oh my god the the garage is on fire like the first thing I'm just like, I, I don't know if it's disbelief at first or what, but it's like, re- like, are we sure? Are we sure this is accurate information first? <laughs> okay. Is it still on fire? Well, let's go fix it. Then. You know what I mean? The, it's yeah. like, I'm not going to like trip over everything on the way to go. Like what? So you really, you really do like an assessment, like an actual no shit assessment. Like you've tried to figure out what's going on with. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, it really depends on the situation. Like if I witness a car wreck, like there's no like, well, I would assess that he was going 65 miles per hour in the opposite <laughs> direction of the. No, 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 nothing like that. But I, I guess just basically understand the situation. Like, okay, house is on fire. There's four people in the house. Uh, no one's hurt yet. There's exits available. Like those, those things will happen. Yeah, it's very quick, of course. Like it's like you mean you, you don't know, millisecond you, or something like that. You're not sitting down writing it down and doing pros and cons for each of yeah possible yeah. I action. gotta go find a pencil. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shit, scrolling on your phone. Where's that drawing app so I can map, map you know, <laughs> write this out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, well, shit. I, my Wi-Fi is down. I guess the uh, yeah. fire burned through the the wires. I would assume. <laughs> so hold on. Um, LTE is not very good here. So let me go in the backyard real quick. Get a signal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But it always it always weirds me out when people will encounter an emergency situation and they will just shut down. Like they just yeah. do. You know, like they're completely yep. useless. Or when you're in the um, the uh, self aid buddy care classes or the first aid classes, things like that. And they're like, you, uh, if you're the first person on the scene, you should be pointing at people and telling them where to go. Like, I'm not the guy pointing at people. I'm like, you don't have to tell me that as soon as I see yeah, I'm something already like doing that compressions, like, I'm, I'm already doing compressions. I'm <laughs> punch. Like I'm on my way to the, to the person and I'm punching people in the face, telling them to go call nine one one or do this or that. Like, I don't wait. I don't mess with people's feelings. Don't give a shit about nothing. It's like, right. this is my right. singular task right here, you know? And, and that will remain my task until that task is either resolved or there's a more pressing one made apparent to me. So yeah, or or if somebody like like if an EMT shows up, like I'm letting them take over. Like, right. I am not qualified for I, like I'm barely qualified. Like I right. got certified for CPR, but mm, I haven't done it on. Well, 
it's been a very, 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 very long time since I've done it on a real person. Um, I'm not the guy. <laughs> you I, know, so. I, I think where we really divide, though, so you have the, if something happens to you, like if you were part of the incident, you have that same reaction, right? Like you, you start assessing, you start thinking, okay, well, this is what's going to happen. This, we have to do this. We have to do that. Whereas if I'm part of the emergency, like, and this isn't like, you know, a car accident or whatever else, it's like too much turbulence on the plane. I shut down. Like my brain, oh. my brain goes into override. I can't control the situation. If I can't control the situation, I don't want to be here. So I would just fall asleep. Like my plane is going to crash and everybody's freaking out, screaming, grabbing their oxygen masks and stuff. And I'm getting the best sleep of my life on the way to the ground. Well, okay. So I, at first I thought well, there's no way I can relate to this because like I, I'll be attentive, but, but in your specific example, plane is about to crash. Um, where there, there is literally nothing you can do. There's a very good chance that I would fall back to sleep as well. <laughs> Because chances are I was already asleep. <laughs> this is true. You wouldn't even have woken up. Because, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You'd yeah, wake up in a cornfield in Indiana, like, what the hell happened? Are we there? Like, what's going on? Yeah, I'm I'm the lone survivor, <laughs> and I only survived because I, you know, like the you know the drunk guy survives the the yeah. the DUI crash because he's all floppy and whatnot. Yep. Like that'd be me surviving the plane crash because I was the only person to sleep during it. Yeah. What what is that movie with Rip Torn? Relaxed body. You know, and they're they're falling towards the ground, and he tells Ryan Reynolds, "You just gotta relax your body." And oh God! Yeah. yeah. It, oh my gosh! Yeah, that that's you as soon as the plane like starts to taxi, like they start pushing it <laughs> away from the gate, and you're like, "Relax, body." Yeah. Oh, dude. Like I, half the time, I I miss taxi even. Like, yeah. As soon as like people are still like trying to get their their small bags in the overhead compartments you said, and whatnot, and you, I'm already asleep. You said small. No. It, well, yeah. Well. <laughs> no. Okay. <clears throat> uh, anything? Uh, anything big happened to you this week? Uh, not to me personally. Yeah. Uh, my, my mom flew I... home last night. She yeah. Was, she was here visiting for about a week and a half. She flew home last night. Her, her flight was at uh, like two o'clock in the morning, and then it got canceled and changed to three thirty in the morning, which threw everything out of whack. Um, made it home safe. Uh, wasn't very happy about the change and all that kind of stuff, which has brought this. That's what brought this whole thing to mind, because she was starting to get a little panicky about the flight changing, and one got canceled. Like, what's going on? All that kind of stuff, and mm. um, yeah, it's it, it just it it just amazes me the different ways people react. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um. Hey, dude. Uh. How about uh. Here. How about we hit a button? Do it. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kids done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. Play with him. This week's game is this game this week's game is called True Brew or Cuckoo. Uh okay. True I'm going to name 10 beers. And I'm going to provide you with the name of the brewery as well. Mm-hmm. I'm going to name you 10 beers, and you're going to tell me if it's a real beer or did I make it up. Okay. Now, is this one of those things like, did you make it up or did you get it from a randomizer? Are those both the same answer? Uh, none of these came from a randomizer. It's either a real actual thing or I I literally just just made something up. Smack the keyboard until it made words. Eh, maybe about maybe about half a second more thought than that. <laughs> oh, you're gonna smack the keyboard this way until it makes words. Got it. Right. Yeah. 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 That's it. This time I'll use All my right. left hand. Blah blah blah. All right. Is this a real beer or did I make it up? Hopped for her pleasure from oh. Belching Beaver Brewery. From from Belching Beaver Brewery. Yes. That sounds like panty peeler. So I'm gonna say that's real. And you're going to be incorrect. What? I made that one up. Um, something else to note as well. Even the fake brewer, uh, fake beers, I assigned them a real brewery. Oh, see that? So, okay. All right. No, that, yeah. all so right. Belching Beaver Brewery is real, but yeah. Hopped for Her Pleasure is not a beer. Made by them. As far as I know. Now, this is one of those things like, 
Well, my uncle's homebrew, he named it Hop for Herp. <laughs> well, okay, sure. I have no doubt. There's probably no untaken names out there, but um, it specifically won't be paired with this brewery. I can tell you that much. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Your second one, Brewberry Pie from Ass Clown Brewing. Brewberry Pie. I want to say that's true. You say that one's real, and you're going to be wrong about that one also. Jeebus. <laughs> Not starting off too hot for you, Amos. The next one is Citra Ass Down from Against the Grain Brewery. We're going to go Citra Ass Down. We're going to go true. You're going to go real on this one, and you got your first point. Fuck yeah. yeah. It's about time. It's about time. <sighs> I absolutely love the name of this beer. And this, this is actually, I think, why I chose to do a quiz like this, because I came across the name of this beer, and I was like, holy fuck, it's the best name. Sit your ass down. Is it at least a citrus beer? It is. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, actually, I can, give you a, I can give you a description is, of is, it. Is sit your ass down, like, does it start with a C? Yes. Okay. All right. Yep. No, no, we're Citra- good. Yeah, it's spelled like citrus, yeah. 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 Um, oh, dang it. I don't have a description right in front. I thought this link had the description. It's just got a. Um, it's actually. What is this? Is this a tweet? No, it's an Instagram post from oh. the brewery about it. So it's not the actual description. Bad link. No beer. We can, yeah, we can we can uh, we can explore these in the post show. Yeah. if you If you'd like. All right. Uh, your next one. She's a stout lass from Moody Tongue Brewing Company. She's a stout lass. I'll say that's real. And I'm going to say you're wrong. Of course. <laughs> Fuck. I made that one up. Um, I, I thought about this one because not too long ago, like a week or so ago, uh, Steph and I were talking about, uh, I don't know if it was an actress or something. Are you saying Steph is a stout lass? No, 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 no. We were talking about, like, uh, oh, no, no, no. I think it was when we were watching the UFC fight a couple of weeks back. And I said something like, like, wow, she's really stout. <laughs> and it just, like, stuck out to me. And I, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, all right. The next one is Polygamy Porter from Wasatch Brewery. Fake. Polygamy Porter is a beer that I've actually tasted before. <laughs> I have had Polygamy Porter. I like where this is going. <laughs> Your next one. Optimus Prime from Ruckus Brewing Company. That's real. Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime is real? Mm-hmm. It is indeed. Mm-hmm. I've it seen that one on real. the shelf. <laughs> All right. I'm surprised you haven't seen Polygamy Porter. That one's getting pretty popular. Pretty mm. pretty wide distribution. All right, your next one is I'd Tap That from Lord Hobo Brewing. Um, that. That's confusing. Well, that's, that's rough because I know there's a title like that by a brewery here locally. Um, I want to say it's like... Uh, Maybe Matanuska Brewing, but I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go real. I'd tap that is a beer that I made up. You suck. Not looking good. Not looking good. All right, your next one is Circumcession Ale from Schmaltz Brewing Company. True. Circumcession Ale is a real beer. Next beer is Kilt Lifter from Moylan's Brewery. Kilt, Kilt Lifter. Lifter. Um, hmm. There it is. I'd tap that. Yep. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to say that is a real beer. 
Kilt Lifter mm-hmm. is indeed a real beer. Okay. And your last one is I Barley Knew Her from Funky Buddha Brewery. I Barley Knew Her. You've had a lot of these uh, little half ass jokes in here and ones that you made up. I'm going to say that one's fake. <laughs> it is. It is indeed fake. All right. Oh, man. I think I, I think I got you on. Yeah, I got you on all the ones I made up, except for that that final one. You suck. I got you. And that's only because I game theoried you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it got you fifty percent. Oh. Which, which means you, you didn't. Uh, didn't get the D. <laughs> this man has no dick. Mm. <laughs> no D for you. <laughs> all right. Well. Screw you then. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it's that I would, I'd tap that is a real beer, but it's not from the brewery that I thought it was. So it's kind of like I fucking lose both ways. Um, yeah, I mean, it totally sounded like a real, a real yeah. name, but I, I didn't find one. Um, no, that, but it, like I said, it doesn't surprise me one bit. That if you don't want to lose like I lost, you should cruise on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Hell yeah. Show us that you care about what we do by giving us a buck and we will continue making the show and not yeah. only making it, but making it better. Yeah. That's well, the money for. in our minds anyway. <laughs> but if you don't think we're doing that, feel free to comment on a post over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Um, one thing that you won't find there, you won't find bottle cap, uh, bottle openers. <laughs> you will not find bottle we should, openers. We should remedy that. There's, there's got to be a, a place that will brand your bottle openers. There, there are many places that will brand your bottle openers. Uh, we, we, we're just not wealthy like that. Um, I, I wanted to ask Kent. Do you know? What this is for? We, I mean, we both know what this is for, right? The 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 little hooky. So, one. so What's for the audio listeners, so you're for? holding up a, a bottle opener, which is a um. I, I, so I've heard these called a couple different things. A bar blade is um one nomenclature for it. Mm-hmm. I like that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very thin. It's like a just a piece of sheet metal, basically. Well, barely, barely thicker than sheet metal. Yep. And uh, well, I mean, I guess technically it is sheet metal. Uh, well, it depends. But on anyway, what, depends on what it's made out of. This one's made out of a bronze pewter, I believe. So, so one end, of course, is used for popping the bottles, right? Or pop, you know, popping the caps off a bottle. The other end is just a round hole that um, is a nice little. But uh, I think another good use for it is if you're reaching into a cooler, you don't want to get your hand all wet or put your dirty ass hands in the fresh ice. You reach in there and you snag a, a bottle by its neck. I I hate to tell you, Kent, that's actually its designed purpose, <laughs> is to reach well, in the... and grab a bottle out of a cooler or out of a bucket of ice or whatever else and pull it up by the neck without having to reach your hand into the ice. That is actually what it's designed for. That's not just like a, you know, oh, I've been doing this. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and these are these are fantastic because they fit just right in your back pocket. Yeah. It works awesome whether you're bartending or if you're if you're barbecuing and you just have this in the back pocket, it's fucking and, perfect. And as far as I can tell, the official name of this of this contraption that we're holding, which is by far the best of the bottle openers. Like I don't even think the others are worth mm. mentioning. This is <laughs> this is a speed blade. Speed blade. Okay. Speed blade. Because it's designed to be to allow you to open Many can or many bottles at a time, very quickly, and you'll yeah. often sometimes find them with the thin edge over here where the uh, where the the bottle opener part is. It's a thin edge, and that is for popping cans. You shove it up behind the tab, you pull it forward, and it pops oh, the tab. Oh, right. Yeah, you know, the, a lot of bars they, like the, like, like of, when a bartender has like like five or six cans of Coke uh, out because he's about to make a whole bunch of yep. mixed drinks. You need to pop, 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 pop down the line. Yep. Uh, yep. And and bars uh, in a lot of places, in fact, most of the places I've lived, they can't serve you a closed container. It has to be an open container. So if you buy a beer and it is in a can, 
or you buy a mixed drink or whatever else that's in a can, they have to open it before they hand it to you. And if you're a bartender trying to open cans all night, I can promise you, you will oh. hate your fingertips more than a new guitarist. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're going to be calloused and probably bloody and everything else. Yeah, it's 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 shit. So having one of those, especially when, once you get the technique down to pop the uh, pop the cans, pouch, it's, it's beautiful. What do you call this type? That is a combination can opener or, or can, combination bottle opener. Yeah, it, I've it, heard them called, uh, what is it, a, a, a waiter's, waiter's friend or something like that? Yeah. Uh, where it's got, uh, yeah, so it's got like a bottle opener on one side. It's got a can opener. It's got the uh, the corkscrew for yep. wine bottles. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty handy, but it's, I tell you what, it is a fucking pain in the ass to use for opening wine bottles. It's it works. A, it's a pain in the ass to use for anything. Like, hold it back up. Yeah. Hold it back. Okay, so yeah. you, on one end you got the the bottle opener, right? Which is you know the the the, the crescent with the little part that protrudes into the the center of the crescent, where you actually uh, use leverage to pop the the top of a bottle. On the far or in the, in the middle, you've got a corkscrew, which let's all just agree that corkscrews are the worst fucking way to open anything ever. <laughs> right. We we actually have a uh, a corkscrewless. Uh, a wine bottle opener where you put on top and then you can basically use a handle and pump and it creates a vacuum to pull the, the uh, cork out by, you know, yep. by suction or whatever. Um, yep. It's so much easier than using a fucking corkscrew. Like this is just the worst thing ever. On the other hand, on the other end, you have a retractable combination can opener. Yeah. You can use that to open a can of soup. You can use it to open a can of beer or soda you can use it to open the classic cans that had the the part you had to push in before the tabs were invented. You can use oh, right, that to right. open like four or five different. You can use that to open a can of oil if you wanted to. Um, none of those work very well. None of those functions of that end of that can, uh, bottle yeah. opener you have there work very well. Yeah, the only thing I really use that for is my leverage for the for the corkscrew. Right. When I'm, yep. That's really all that's good for, right. and it's and like you said, it's. It's barely good for that. Yeah. I actually, when I was in Germany, I actually got pretty good at using this uh, because I was um, uh, I would go around with someone that was doing wine tastings, and I was kind of the the bar back for that. Like I was bringing in the boxes of the wine, opening the bottles. Yeah. I was also the guy that like took the money for the sales and stuff like that. And um, I had to open a lot of bottles real fast, and um, I actually got decent. Yeah, one of these. Now hold that back <laughs> up because Curtis LaRock in the chat he says the can opener thing on the other side can open a bottle just fine, and you're not wrong. You can use that to open a bottle. In fact, it's probably better at opening bottles than it is opening cans. The bottle opener on there though, it is functional. However, yes. there are there are two glaring fucking problems with it. One, hold it up and then grab it with your hand. Hold it up. Talking about and, oh this yeah and then grab it with your hand now now hold the loop at the top the little loop thing let go of the other hand uh-huh. turn away like turn your face away to where you can't see it okay and now with the other hand grab it like you're gonna open a bottle <laughs> no <laughs> i don't want to it's scary right right it's very you, sharp exactly <laughs> exactly and you don't know what part you're gonna so if you're drinking and it's dark you, that's a danger and then this is a sober this is a sober person's tool and this is why this is a waiter's friend yeah. or whatever it's called it's not uh no and, and then the bottle opener part itself try to open a bottle with that five mm. times like open a six pack with that versus opening a six pack with this and you will never use one of those again. Yeah. Because this gives my, you more leverage. It gives you more grip. You don't have to worry about cutting yourself or impaling yourself with a fucking corkscrew. Like my favorite regular round the house use bottle opener is this one I have right here, actually. Yeah. It's uh this one, this particular one is from Orval, which is one of the Trappist breweries. Mm-hmm. I bought this actually at the uh, at the monastery. It looks like a uh, bottle opener on one end and a uh, a a keg pull on the other, like a tap pull, a tap handle. Oh well, yeah, I think I think it was intentionally made to look like that. Yeah, uh, but it's just a it's just a lathed it's just a lathed piece of wood. Right. That's, uh, that had a a bottle opener just kind of shoved into it. Um, but it is the most comfortable, like, like the, the grip. 
Ana is just, yeah, it is yeah. the most ergonomic bottle opener that I've ever used. I absolutely adore this one. Yeah. Um, then you got the decorative type, and which is like this one right here. This Alaskan Breweries one. It's a, basically, it looks like a uh, uh, a pick. Yep. With a well, like you're gonna go um, go looking for gold or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, and it's really cool. Gold I used to, and them, them dar hills. I used to use it all the time, and then one day I opened the drawer and I remembered that it had a couple of these that I'd bought, and I have this in my desk now, and I never use this one anymore. Although mm. this is an example of one that is tapered at the bottle opener end for opening cans. Right, right. For soda cans or whatever. Let me ask you that. What do you call this? So this this is my keys. Uh huh. Right, and I've got. Uh, so this is on my person at all times. What do you what do you call this? Like just colloquially, uh, keychain bottle opener, uh, or uh, that would also be a key weight because it's not good for anything besides having adding weight to your keys, which I fucking hate. <laughs> no. This works fantastic. Mine works fantastic for uh, for opening bottles, which I think I got this one from. I think this is AADD swag. Yeah. That the uh, that the, uh, the, the letters and yeah. whatnot. Now, the, that is another uh, one that has a bottle opener, can opener combo on it. Yes. Yeah, yes. You, you flip yes, it over and it slides right. right in the tab and pops it right open. Yep. So this, we call these church keys. <sighs> okay. Okay. <laughs> that, yeah. No, that's that's legit. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think it's, it's a really bad name. Why? I, I don't know. Like when I think church keys, I'm not thinking of open bottles. I'm thinking of like opening. But that's the beauty of it. Wine. That's the beauty of it. Like you say, like you know, hey, can I get the, can I get the church key? Like nobody thinks that it's gonna open your beer. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's just a brilliant name. Did you know. just talk yourself out of your own argument? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had something good there. Yeah. It just turns out I just it's just my opinion. So yeah. Shut up. <laughs> We told you about that, Kent. Don't be bringing your opinions around here. Uh, so let me. I'm gonna hold this up to the camera, uh -huh. and I want you to read this. Uh, what's the first? Don't don't examine it. Just okay. I want you to just read it and tell me what it says. RMMA. Okay. All right. So what it actually says is Roma, R O M A. Okay. My next question um, was gonna be Obama, but uh, okay. So that's where I was going with this, actually. So it's it's Roma, which uh -huh. I got this bottle opener in in Rome, in Roma, in Italy. Yep the the O isn't it an isn't an O? It's no. a uh, it's the Colosseum. It's like a stylized. It's supposed to be the stand-in for the O. Right, which is and why which is the, why it, it's kind of stylized in a way that made me think it was an M, which is why I said R M M A. Right, and the the R is blue, the M is white, and the A is red. Right. Now, you hold this horizontally, the bottle opening portion, the uh -huh. uh, whatever, the, the leveraged uh, actual cap popper right. peaks, is just to the left of the R. Yes. Like as you would read it. And it makes it look like it's an O. Uh huh. And the R, if you look at it from any kind of distance or you squint, it could very easily be a B. And right. the fact that, it, that the letters are red, white, and blue. Right. Very much, even though I know what this says, I have owned this for many years, and I look at it almost every single day. Every time I look at it, I have to double take because I think it says Obama. It doesn't help that the Coliseum in the middle looks far more like an A than it does an O. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, I will make sure Kent takes a picture of that particular bottle uh, opener and includes it in the show notes. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, um, yeah. What else? You you got any other uh, any cool examples over there? No, because I mean, I, I I have the same silly, stupid. I mean, this one's at least a little bit safer than yours, because the corkscrew is like buried in there. Right. Yep. You know, yep. so it's like you're not gonna gank yourself, <laughs> but. It's still, and this one is, this one's only handle on this side, but it does have a booger picker. I mean, a uh, booger picker. Yeah, a little saw. <laughs> I don't anything that looks dangerous that I don't know the the like why it's there. I call it a booger picker. Maybe it's a letter opener. I don't. That's like the world's tiniest shit knife. Yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I suppose you could you could cut a motherfucker if you were desperate. Curtis says it's a toe knife. I don't want to know. Oh, oh God. Uh, uh, yeah. I've got a. Uh, so you know how we have challenge coins in the military? Yeah, I got one uh, of those right here with the bottle. So, there. I've got a. Yeah. So that's what I was gonna say. I've got one that's not so much coin shaped. It's not an actual RMO mm-hmm. round metal object. Uh, but in lieu of a coin, uh, one of the bases I was at in, in ACC, I picked this thing up. It's got uh, it, it, it's specifically for weapons troops like yep. me, you know, and it's got the uh, the Grim Reaper on the back with the saying providing our enemies a chance to die for their country. Right. Um, that's kind of you know more of a decorative one. I mean, it's, it's pocket size. You can throw it in your pocket, take it. Th- to go. Those are really uh, those are really common for um, for. Uh, Dining ins and dining outs and things like that, uh, maintainer of the year banquets, things like that. That's really common. Get to get a, a coin that also has a bottle opener somehow integrated with it. I've seen them where they're uh, here's my Juvat coin. There, I've seen them where they're they're niched on the side to where you can like bring the coin up and around the bottle and it pulls the tab or it pulls uh, the uh, the right. cap with it. Uh, or they're in, fancy. Yeah, integrated like this presidential one right here, or Air mm-hmm. Force One mm-hmm. coin uh, provided by yeah. one of our friends of the show um yeah yeah th- that's that's always the thing so yeah i've got uh i've also got this one it's a bullet is that a it's like a large is uh, that a 20 mil it's not 20 mil this is like a 10 mil or something okay. i don't i'm not really sure what this goes to it's hard to see scale <laughs> with like by a sky well because like you're it looks so much bigger than your head but your hands look smaller because they're i don't know right yeah, yeah. So it's hard to tell. Um, that, that one, that one was kind of interesting, I thought. And then um, I just got a, I just, well, I was gonna show like kind of the uh, cheap novelty ones, where this is an Archer one mm. that uh, I just, I realized just before the show that the battery is dead in it. It's one of those that uh, it does sounds. So like when you pop a bottle, it says something like, "This is how we get ants," you know, or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. And then the last one I was gonna show was one that that was custom made for me uh somebody gave it to me it doubles as a uh so it's a obviously it's a bottle opener yeah but it's also a decorative sign so you i used to have this hanging above the entryway to my bar when i was in germany gotcha. uh, it says uncle, uncle kent's pub uh, so you know you know how you have sets of friends where like your kids call the other ones like aunt and uncle yeah you know and that's that's how they were right so the uh the kids called me uncle kent so uh, the friends, you know, they, they would always refer to like going to our house to drink or whatever they said. They would say, we're going to Uncle Kent's pub. So, uh, are, are, so I know a lot of people can't do this. Uh, are you able to pop a bottle with the lighter? Are you a lighter popper? Um, I don't like doing it, but I, I do do it. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can do that. I can, um, side of a table i can use another beer to open a beer i can't do that um, one i can't do that one i'm, I'm not yeah, saying that the, i can't that it's not possible do it just right you're gonna make a mess right yeah. exactly like i've only ever like tried it once and it didn't turn out and I, so oh curtis mm-hmm. says he can do his teeth no ho, ho, ho. nope no nope. no i actually so when i was looking at bottle opener stuff earlier i found a statistic that i think it was new zealand averages 70 like ER visits, I think yeah. 70 ER visits a year for uh, bottle opener injuries. Jesus. And that, and that pales, that number pales in comparison to the number of injuries that people get for doing things like opening bottles with their teeth. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. <laughs> have you ever, have you used like a, a wedding ring or whatever to open one? Uh, yes. And I also don't like doing that. I, well, I, I, I rarely wear a wedding ring now, and when I do, it's actually a silicone one because my my metal one doesn't fit, and the uh, 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 hematite ones that my wife had had bought me kept breaking. So apparently, well, we can get into the spirituality aspect of it later, but hematite breaking when you're touching it is not a good sign for your energy. Um, huh, right, I'm sure. Uh, the, uh, I, I did do it once with, the, with my tungsten ring, my original wedding ring and mm-hmm. it worked, but I also bruised the underside of my knuckle so bad that I yep. couldn't bend my finger for about four days and it turned the entire palm 
like a light purple. It, it yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like I just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do right. it because it it hurts and you can end up breaking something. Like I mean, not your physical body. I mean, like you know, like breaking like your marriage, your ring, or yeah, or just scratching up the jewelry, or yeah. Like, I mean, they you can buy rings that have like the built-in bottle openers. Yeah. Like okay, I mean, I guess, but but you you can get. I I, I saw a uh, uh, Apple Watch uh, band that the clasp mm-hmm. was a bottle opener, and I was like, that's pretty cool, but. If you don't wash your like I I wear my watch to the shower every day when I shower I loosen it to where it's loose on my wrist I get my shower and then I compare my watch to other people that have Apple watches I I never go without a watch because at night I I have a an older one that I put on um yeah he says or belt yep uh I've right, seen right. people that wear their Apple watch and are afraid to get them wet and they are just gunk on the inside of the Apple Watch in all the crevices. And I've never oh, had that I've, problem because yeah. I, I basically wash it off with, with my shower every single day. And, uh, yeah, I can imagine, like, if you go out one night, you know, you're out partying or whatever, and you're opening beers with your with your watch band, and then you go and go, get to the house and you don't get a shower or whatever else, and you just crash because you're just half passed out. Uh, right. You wake up the next day and, and you got to get up and get on with your day. What does that watch smell like with all the like the beer oh. and the sweat and like I couldn't I, possibly that, other fluids. I there's no no fucking way I could get through a day like that. Not a goddamn <laughs> chance. <laughs> oh god, yeah, uh, that's nasty. That's nasty. Uh, that's nope. nasty. No. Nope. Hey, um, speaking of nasty, th- you ready to get nasty? You want to you want to yell about something? You want to just get fucking just ramped up yeah dude what's been on your mind man what's um what, what what you feel like ranting about tonight so i have a wife she's an amazing woman she's mm. she's beautiful she's amazing in certain aspects i shouldn't be talking about publicly <laughs> She just got promoted to to chief. Well, she hasn't been promoted yet, but she's been selected for promotion. Right. I would like to talk about rank disparity in the Air Force. Okay. In the Air Force, you can have two tiers of rank. There's not three. There's two. Most services have three. Air Force only has two because that middle tier, well, fuck it. We're not using the two we have right the, anyway, so I have a third. You have the enlisted tier and you have the uh, commissioned tier. So you have the E's and the O's, the enlisted and the officers. The enlisted ranks go from one to nine, E1, E2, blah, 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 all the way up to E9. E9 is chief. Uh, uh, chiefs are E9s if you don't like them, and E9s are chiefs by default. Then you have the officer tiers. You go 01 to 010. First of all, why the fuck are there 10 officer tiers when there's only nine enlisted tiers? But whatever. We'll get to that later. E1 through E4 is airmen. You're kind of the peons. You're basically just hoping to fucking stay alive and eat tomorrow. Five, uh, E5 and E6, you're actually doing most of the work, a lot of the supervising. E7, you're doing mostly supervising, maybe some strategic planning. E8, you're actually doing more planning, less direct supervision, but more general supervision, organizational supervision. As an E9, as a chief, you are, should be doing pretty much entirely mentorship is your form of, of supervision now. And you are helping lead the squadron, the, the group, the wing, whatever you're assigned to in its direction that it needs to go to accomplish its mission. Conversely, as an officer, 01 to 03 are the pissant ranks. You got the lieutenant, the other lieutenant. The, nobody can ever remember which one goes where because it doesn't fucking matter. And then you have captains. And by then, well, now they've actually been around long enough. They might know some fucking rules, but probably not. They're just winging it anyway. Unless, of course, they're in the medical field, in which case they're just handed fucking captain and they just get told to go on their fucking way. And none of them even know how to put their uniform on, right? So we'll, we'll skip to that part right now. <clears throat> As an 04, you're a major, and you're typically leading a squadron. You're like, you're the fucking lead in a squadron. You you have anywhere from 50 to 1,000 people under your command. Unless, yeah, unless you're a pilot. Major 
if well, you're a pilot, I, major uh, means you 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 finally know how to fly an airplane correctly I, most of the time. I will get to pilots. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. don't you fucking worry. <laughs> All right. So as a major, you are leading a squadron. As a lieutenant colonel, you're typically leading a higher profile, like a, a, a main area, like a larger squadron or one that has more importance in the direct mission aspect of it. So instead of like a supporting role, you're playing more of a direct uh, impact role. And then as a colonel, you should be typically leading a base, a wing. You're leading multiple squadrons. You're leading multiple groups. Uh, you might, you know, you start out as a group and then you go on to a wing level. And then you get into the generals, okay? The generals, there's four levels of generals. None of them fucking matter to day-to-day -day anything. Like, none of them matter. Every time they fart, some policy changes. Hundreds of people have to go out of their way to do a bunch of fucking work that isn't necessary because next time someone else farts, it's going to go a different direction. Doesn't fucking matter at all. The only general you need to worry about is your chief of staff or your, your joint chief. Um, so that's it. Okay. Here's where the problem comes in. As a Lieutenant, you come in, you don't know a goddamn thing. You're usually assigned to some fucking mass sergeant that barely picks their own nose the right way. You get up to captain. You're usually working with a senior or a chief. Chiefs are supposed to be the creme de la creme. They're supposed to be the one hundred, the top 1% of the entire enlisted force. That's not the entire enlisted force in your base. That's the entire enlisted force. In the fucking Air Force. Period. Top yep. 1%. It's the one, yeah, it's the 1% of the 1%. Right. As a senior, it's supposed to be 2%. So total, they're 3% of the fucking entire enlisted force. As a senior master sergeant, you should be working with maybe a captain or a major if you're going to be doing the tutorship thing to get them to understand the fucking rules. So by the time they're a major, they actually know how to dress in the goddamn uniform appropriately. <laughs> mm hmm as a chief, this is where it pisses me off. As a chief, you should be guiding majors at the least, lieutenant colonels, ideally, and advising a colonel. That, that should be your fucking role. But we have chiefs floating around, don't know the goddamn hole in the ground from their ass, and they are at the top levels of the echelon. They're in wings and shit like that. You also have chiefs that are shit hot. Holy God damn it. Everybody in the world wants to fucking work for this dude because he gets it, man. He is. He understands how to get his people in the condition they need to be in mentally, physically, knowledgeably, uh, uh, equipped, equipped mentally into a place to make the mission fucking go anywhere it needs to go. And those are the ones you're always going to find at the lowest fucking levels. You got a chief in an AMU who's got more goddamn common sense than a chief at the fucking wing. But the chief of the wing is whispering to the fucking colonel who directs the light colonel who directs the major who gets in the other chief's ass because they fucking didn't agree last week. All I'm saying is that the E tier and the O tier needs to have an equivalency. And I feel that the E9 should be roughly equivalent after 20-something years of experience, to at least the major level, more likely the lieutenant colonel level, who's been in for roughly half as long and started out with a big boost. And there should be no goddamn way that a chief should ever have to fucking salute some piece of shit lieutenant that just arrived <laughs> off the goddamn <laughs> boat yesterday and said, hey, y'all, salute me. I got a commission from some piece of shit president. That's all I got to say. All right. Um, yeah, oh, and, pilot, no and pilots are shit. Zipper suited sun gods. My personal opinion did not reflect the opinion of Kent. He actually works with pilots that he likes. Fuck pilots. They're all... <laughs> it's a pilot's air force, and if it weren't for the pilots, we wouldn't have an air force, and... Well, the world itself would be better without the pilots, but probably not the Air Force. And the Air Force does make the world better. It's it's confusing in my head. <laughs> Amos's opinions are his own. Do, they do not necessarily reflect that of Ritual Misery as an organization or his co-host, Kent. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so Rants, um, as a segment, I thought was going to be a 60-second go. It, it was uh, with it, a sixty-second rejoinder. 
It, it yeah, you can you feel free to rejoin. <laughs> no, I'm good. I, I I think I'm good with my disclaimer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so rants with Amos and rants with Kent is uh two well basically the same bit, but it's uh two new bits that we are working on bringing to the rotation for our shows. Um, speaking of changes to the show, this is almost certainly our last Thursday episode of Ritual Misery. Ah, here you go at, again. Here at you... least for the near future. <laughs> here you go again. We were supposed to be doing Thursday episodes through the through the end of February and then starting the Sundays this week and then transitioning over at the end of February to give everybody a chance to catch up. Oh, did did, did we decide that when I wasn't there? Or... No, you decided that when I uh, when, uh, we decided that when you weren't taking notes but I was. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. Okay. So, um, all right. So we will be doing a show on Sunday, this coming Sunday. This Sunday. Same time. So normal time, but on Sunday. Um, it was supposed to know. be at two hours earlier than this time, which would have been like ideal. But then we found out that the reason we went early isn't necessarily a thing. So we're just going to keep our normal time and move on. And we, we might adjust it by the end of February to kind of see how it yep. feels. But uh, yep. this week it will be at 6 p.m. Alaska time, 7 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Mountain, 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern. And Central time zone doesn't make any fucking sense because it's not in the center of anything. <laughs> yeah, no, um, you are right. I, I think that's that's more a reflection of the. Never, never mind. Doesn't matter. Of the, of, <laughs> of the population. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Okay. So so we're doing a show Sunday. I believe it's just the two of us, and then a week from Sunday, uh, we will have a guest. So Ryan Airy, if any of you guys are familiar with Screen Crush, um, he's done quite a few other things as well but by far today in 2021 at least as far as i know the most popular thing that he does is screen crush um, check him out i think he has great videos he's also a producer director writer does all kinds of stuff uh anyway he's gonna be on the show a week from sunday really looking forward to that episode um and in the not too distant future hopefully sometime in march we will be having jenny josephson on the show oh hot shit yep Hell yeah. Um, that's it. That's it. That's it. As far as um, guest news that I can announce at this time, that's all I've got. <laughs> as he reaches in his pocket, like, oh, shit, don't, don't put that back in there. Put that back in there. <laughs> um, yeah, and we are also supposed to have uh, 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 Sergeant Muffin on soon whenever the oh. – uh, what was that arcade machine thing that you get that you have? The Legends Ultimate? Yeah, the, when the Legends Pinball comes out and arrives at Ken's house, we're supposed to be getting the Sergeant Muffin on to discuss pinball, uh, uh, analog and digital pinball machines. That sounds freaking awesome. Yeah, so that's kind of what we're waiting for. We've been wanting to have Sergeant Muffin on for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he was our guest, like, what, three years ago? Oh, my God, Four? so long ago. Yeah. Like, it was a million years ago. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. <gasps> Um, right. But yeah, so definitely like uh, check us out on Sundays, possibly Thursdays, probably just Sundays. We'll <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we will we will we will have week. a show at our normal time for the rest of the month on Thursdays at least. Uh, whether or not Kent has already made plans and and didn't uh, didn't get the memo and has will not be here, then maybe I'll just stream some Factorio or something. But I will be here every Thursday this month. And then uh, we'll 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 get our shit together. We'll put our shit in a sock. <laughs> Probably not. Where did that saying come from? I'm not a fan. Um, I caught it from shit in a sock. I caught it from a um a a, a lieutenant that I or is she a captain? I don't know. She acted like a lieutenant. I fucking hated her. Did I could not stand her. And I worked for her, uh at Osan, and um. If she ever, if she ever wants to be a guest on the show to tell me how bad I sucked, by all means, bring it. Uh, I, I, I fucking hated working for her and everything else, and that was her, her saying. But she hung out with pilots all the time, so everybody just assumed that it was some pilot bullshit that, that the maintainer officer was fucking trying to crush on or something. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> okay. <sighs> 
Um, anyway, uh, ritualmisery.com has links to all of our stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the point of the show where Kent is supposed to ask me, uh, seemingly at random, what the next ne- next week's topic is. And he's... he's. Oh, yeah, I failed. I failed. Mm-hmm. Amos, uh, I picked bottle openers last week to talk yeah. about this week. What are you going to talk about this week to talk about on Sunday? <laughs> oh, shit. It's Sunday. <laughs> um, uh, Let's talk about... Let's talk about TikTok. TikTok. God damn it. Yep. Okay. No. And because I love it, you hate it. I think it'd be a great discussion. Uh okay. Yep. All right. TikTok it is. I guess I'm gonna have to brush up my uh your, my my ticks and my talks. Your anti ticks and anti talks. <laughs> <laughs> my ticking and my talking, my uh Oh uh, shit. I, anyway. Uh ritualmisery.com <laughs> slash swag. Email us podcast at ritualmisery.com. We've been actually getting some, a lot of emails lately. Like I don't say a lot, but way more than we typically get. Email us. Tell us what you thought about tonight's show, what you think about bottle openers. Send us pictures of the bottle, op- bottle openers that you have on hand because mm-hmm. we all have at least one. Because if you're watching this show, you need a fucking drink. And, uh, or, or let us know what you think about TikTok. Or email us, so Kent would have to watch it. Email us some of your favorite TikToks that you think we would find fucking hilarious they better be good damn it because if they're not i'm gonna call you out on the show podcast <laughs> at ritualmisery.com. that's just a chance you take man that's a chance to take you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at uh podcast or uh, <laughs> ritualmisery.com. yes ritualmisery.com. yeah and the, yeah all that stuff we are live uh, at random times nowadays, it seems. Thursdays for the rest of the month, Sundays at random times for the next couple weeks, and then hopefully by March we'll have something figured out permanently. Uh, thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya! Hopefully fucking up the show doesn't become a bit again. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. So that was the voice of Flavor.